Hey, man. Hey, Nathan. How are you? Good. I'm good. How's it going over there? Doing well. I'm working from home today. Nice. Um, Today's one of those days. It's like I've just got. I, I went into today thinking, okay, I'm going to work on the new marketing site today. Like, going to dig in and knock out a few pages. And I haven't touched it because <laughs> I've been I've been just bouncing around a bunch of things and working with a bunch of people, and it's it's great, but it's also frustrating. Like, like I really was hoping to do this today, and now I'm I was kind of like fired up to get in there and not be bothered. And it's not even being bothered. Bothered is the wrong word. Like just not be bothered by other things, not people, just stuff that I have to do, and, and I couldn't get to it. So I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I'm, I'm no, a little no, today. Whatever. I'm going through the same thing, like it, like intensely today. Yes. It's the same goddamn thing, and it keeps happening. Like I, um, you know, every day we you know we use these these uh, automated questions in high rise and 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 every or in in base camp uh, mm -hmm. this this new feature of, of base camp three. Every day it asks us at the end of the day, you know, what we got done. And usually I will put down, we also have been kind of making a habit of saying like what we've got done today and what we're going to do possibly tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm always saying like, okay, I plan on doing these three things tomorrow. I plan on getting to these things. And like every day it's like, it just never happens. Mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah. it, keeps, it keeps happening. And, and some days I, I, I forgive myself. Some days I'm like, okay, this is fine, you know. I got some other good stuff done today, you know, or I made some progress on this. But man, some days are just like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't get enough done. Like, for example, like today, I burned hours helping with a support case because of some code I changed that we wanted. That we we we've changed these like automated rules to like how certain emails come into high rise. They can get automated. We try to automate assigning them to the correct dealer case. We don't do it like there's there's a lot of exceptions to this rule. We try and be smart about it. But when it goes wrong, it's hard to troubleshoot. And there's enough chances also for user error that it makes like it really difficult to troubleshoot right now. Like, did the computer fuck it up or did a user accidentally put it in the wrong place and now they can't find it? Yeah. And because I changed it, now I'm on the hook for doing all these support cases and digging through this stuff. And it's, I don't know, I, I'm complaining and I don't really have a good solution to it, but it's, it's distracting me from things that I think have much bigger impact. And I don't know, I don't know how to, how to short circuit yeah. that exactly. Well, it's, it's not, and it's like, it's not that I, 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 I'll speak for myself. I'm sure I can speak for you, but you can speak for yourself. I feel like it's not that I'm not getting stuff done. I'm getting actually a bunch of things done today. It's just not the stuff I wanted to get done. And I feel like it's a little bit scattered, and I'm, I was kind of hoping to have a good full day to knock out a bunch of stuff. But anyway, I'll find time. It's just how it goes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we, we ended the, the, the show yesterday talking a little bit about the why, you know, um, that great companies, um, there, there's more, it's more than just the product. It's like they stand for something, and they have a point of view, and people can, can sort of get into that or get, get away from it. But that's kind of the, the lightning rod sort of. Um, which is really healthy. And I, and I was saying that I had some thoughts about that and we ran out of time. One of the things that I was thinking a lot about, I've been thinking a lot about personally, is that um, we used to be called 37 Signals, now we're called Basecamp. 37 Signals, I think, uh, if I had to think about what the brand represented, it was definitely like a, an irreverent, um, independent spirit brand. Uh, we did things differently. We had very strong opinions about how the industry works and how we work. And and we were brash and shared a lot of thoughts about that. And we can built up a reputation over the years about, about standing up for what we believe in and doing things differently and bootstrapping and all these things, right? Um, people came to know us. We wrote some books, the whole thing. Uh, and then we switched to Basecamp. And I sort of assumed that the, that the um, sort of the, the reputation of 37 Signals, brand reputation would carry over because it's the same company. It's just a different name. It's the same product. It's just a different name. Yeah. But I'm not so sure that that's true. And I'm, I'm sort of wondering about that, about like I, maybe we've assumed too much about what people think about, like that people even have a point of view about what Basecamp is. They might have a point of view about what the product stands for. Um, but now that that's also the company name, like we have to work on telling that story all over again, basically. The why, basically. We're the same people and we have the same point of view, but when you change your name, people don't know you're the same. And so uh, that's something that I've been thinking a little bit about and I wanna do it on the new site. We wanna just get a little bit more into about us and, and um, 
not that's not what the site's about, but it should be a prominent option for people to understand what they're buying from and what we stand for and where, where we're coming from. Um, today on the Basecamp site, it's very, very downplayed. It's mostly about the product, which is fine. But my feeling is that, like you were getting at, is that people don't just buy products. They buy products from a company and they want to know who they're doing business with and why they're doing business with them and can they support them and do they dig them. So I think there's something to that as well. So we want to get into that um, with the new site a bit. Yeah. I feel like I'm going through something similar on a different scale and in a little different way, but it's it's similar. It's like when I took over, so with Draft, and I was doing Draft before High Rise, um, again, it was one of these things where it's just like, I want to, I don't want it to just be about the product. I want to also be different. You know, everybody is just, every, every website, every homepage is the same thing, right? It's like, I don't know, you know, the, the three columns, talk about the features and right. like, Yep. I just wanted, so right now draft, it's like, I wanted to be more, even more like Google. Like you go to draft and it's just like a button start. And like, it's just, you know, here's, here's what draft is about. Do you want to click and, and read more? You click about or something. Yep. And even then the next page, when you read about it, still nothing about features. It's all about like the philosophy of like why I bothered to create this product to begin with and like how I feel about writing software. Um, and I think it made a big impact. Like, I mean, it's, I think it definitely caught people's attention and people referred to it a lot and tweeted about it. And, and I, I think by focusing kind of on the why I made it uh, and why people should even bother paying attention versus a screenshot of yet another minimal editor or whatever, the features that I had, I think it made a big impact. And, and, and like you said about like kind of transferring from you know, base uh, 37 signals to base cam and kind of like not being able to kind of carry some of that over. I feel like that's, that's, you know, kind of happened here too a little bit. Like it's like now that I've taken over high rise, like, I don't know the things that I think about the, the philosophies I have about whatever, you know, running a company, making software, designing things hasn't quite just translated over to this audience. Like it, it, it's like I'm a stranger and, and, and some of these thoughts are, are, are not, they're not there yet. They're not in, in the view of, of people who want to try out high rise. And so it's like, you know, it is, it's like what you're saying. Like we, I, I want to, figure out how to incorporate them into high rise. And I don't quite know how to do that yet. Exactly. Um, maybe it's very similar, a very similar about page or prominent kind of thing up at the top. I don't know, but I, I do think it's important because you're right. Like I think a lot of people who are watching this and, you know, paid attention to, to you guys because of the why, I mean, that was, that was like, you know, that pulled us all in to, to pay attention to the features and the how and the design and, I think it's. I think it is important, um, and yeah, I, I plan on spending a lot more time on it too. Um, and I think a lot of people should. It's just. It's hard though. It's. It's. You start. I don't know. Asking a lot of philosophical questions about yourself that I think are harder to do than like taking screenshots of features. Yeah, it's. 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 Um. It's an interesting thing how how. Uh, how um, how much can be tied up in a name. Um, and a reputation is, is, is formed and then a name changes and it's different. And, and um, uh, the, the good thing is that when the people are the same, like it's, it's easy to connect the dots. If the, if the company was completely different, that would be harder. But anyway, it's an interesting challenge. And um, another, another side of that though is, is the why about something. So I'm working on the new, the new Basecamp 3 marketing site right now. And I, I want to approach, I want to approach a little bit differently on these sort of, we want to have pages that describe sort of the key benefits and the key features of the product, but I don't want to do it from a features perspective. I want to do it from a, um, I, I want to have a, like a, a situation or a scenario in mind and, and, and frame it around that. So, um, for example, we're working on this new, new feature in Basecamp 3 called, um, well, it's, it's it doesn't matter what it's called, but it's basically a much better way to work with clients uh, in Basecamp. And I don't want to just say a much better way to work with clients in Basecamp, and here's the 12 things that it does, and here's why it's better necessarily. Because yeah, right. some people don't know what better is because they've never had it in the first place. So, like, better is the wrong word even. But um, what I want to say is, like, the scenario is, like, I've got a product. I just, I just want a gig. I just got a gig. Client hired me. I've now got to get my team on the same page. I've got to divvy up the work that needs to be done. I've, we've got to talk about stuff. We've got to talk about some things the client should see, some things the client shouldn't see. There's things I want to tell the client. I want to like show them stuff and get their feedback on the record. So I have a yes or a no, and it's and I can point back to it later. But some stuff I don't want the client to see because it's it's work in progress and it's behind the scenes chatter and it's back channel stuff. Like there's a situation that happens, and if I can describe that situation clearly, 
and then say, we built this product to, for this specific, we built this feature or whatever for this specific situation, I can, I can always point back to the situation and say, here's why this thing that we built deals with this well. Here's why this thing that we built deals with this thing you're dealing with well. Here's why this thing we built is great for this particular moment in time when you have this conflict. Like, versus saying like, it does this, 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 and this, but doesn't tie that back to anything that you're actually dealing with. Like, you'd have to connect the dots yourself. So I've yeah. been thinking a little bit about, and also like things like reporting and everything that, I, I wanna describe everything as a, it begins as a thought bubble in someone's head of, of something they need to know or need to do or need to understand or whatever, and then say, we can help you with that. Like, here's this thing in Basecamp 3 that does that. And because it does that, the thing that you had in your head is now solved. Like, there's a resolution that, the, that it begins with an unknown, like a problem or a concern or a, or, or a question or a situation, and Basecamp can provide resolution to that. Um, and that's how, I want to, that's how I'm working on explaining these, these top level, high level sort of features. Um, but that always comes back down to the why, like why does this feature exist? It doesn't exist because it does eight things. It exists because someone needs these things because they're running into this situation or they're in this scenario or whatever it might be. So anyway, the why plays, it plays a part in not only the brand and the, the, the point of view, but also in like why do we make this thing not just this thing broadly, but even this specific slice of the thing. So right. it's a really good exercise. Yeah, and we're, we're, we're doing this too. This is another thing I've kind of tried to challenge ourselves to do. It's a very similar thing. Like I, um, I want, we've, talk, we've touched on this before, but you know, a lot of people who, who email us in a support, it's not so much about like, you know, give me help on how to tag something or give me, they, they can figure that out. You know, it's intuitive to maybe tag a person. Uh, they can look in our help files if they really get, get stuck. But it's, they keep asking like, well, how do I, how do I, and we've talked about this, like they want to know how to do it best. They, they, they don't right. want to screw up. And, they, and, and so they want to like, and, and really like Kathy Sierra, like I, 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 I'm sure we've talked about her on, on this before. And I, I mentioned her, I, I know I drop her name constantly, but like mm -hmm. everybody should be reading her blog. <laughs> um, she's got a new book out. I don't, I haven't even read it. I'm sure it's fantastic though, but her blog is excellent. She's got this really great phenomenal post that, that I think, in, you know, influences a lot of other, uh, of her writing, which is, you know, um, you know, teach people like, you know, uh, compete instead of out competing everyone by out spending, like out teach everyone and help your users to get better at a product. Like, you know, no one wants uh, the, the the camera guide. They don't. They don't really care about the manual to the camera. They want to be better photographers. And so, in that vein, like, yeah, I, we want to help people learn how to become better at recruiting or raising money or selling something. Um, and so now we're we're tasked with trying to figure that out. Like some of it, I think we can do ourselves. Like right now, you know, we've been hiring some people. We could write a guide on like, hey, here's how you. Here's a, here's a good recruiting process. This is how we do things. It doesn't even really have to involve high rise, but it does. Like you know, we keep track of you know who we who we've talked to, what kind of stage they're in. Of you know, we've we've just emailed them or we've called them or we're ready for another phone call. Um, but there's situations now. One one place that we're kind of stuck maybe a little bit is like we'd like to kind of delve into some use cases that we might not even be best to even say that we can do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure how to tackle that yet. Like it's like. You know, uh, how do you how do you manage a, a sales team of five people? We don't we don't do that at high rise. We don't manage a sales team, but right. there's plenty of high rise users doing that. So I'm, I'm I'm a little torn on how to best do that. You know, should I am I going to go and just kind of interview people and take notes and then provide that as a guide? You know, should I just get somebody else to 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 write some of this stuff or to create some of these use cases? Um, I don't know. I'm a little. I'm a little. I'm still trying to brainstorm that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's it's <laughs> it's a it's a forever forever challenge. I think. Um, uh, it's funny. I was doing some. Um, I was doing some. Uh, so we're starting beta testing for for BC three this week, Basecamp three, and um, so I've been doing some walkthroughs of the product because it's not fully done. So I want to like walk people through it so they understand it so they can at least start to use it. Clearly, um, and uh, and it sort of explain like this is this area is in construct under construction. This is a little rough over here, but here's how it works. Anyway, um, it's interesting to describe to, to have to describe something to someone who's not seen it before at all, 
um, versus describing stuff internally that I've been used to ex explaining things in, to people internally. It's just that the very, it's very clarifying to walk someone through something they've never seen from scratch and, and, to, and to catch yourself and, re and ca to catch yourself explaining something um, and, and remember how you've, how you've pitched it because um, it just it comes out differently when people don't have any prior um, experience with the product and you're just like, where do I even start talking about this thing? Um, and what, one, way, one good way to do it, I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I didn't do this today, but I've done this in the past is like, um, these are, first of all, these are customers who've used Basecamp in the past. They might be using it now or they may have used it and aren't using it anymore. Um, these are the ones we're starting with beta testing. Um, like, um, tell me, tell me, like, what, what are you working on right now? Just like, what are you, what are you working on? And then listening to what they're working on, forget Basecamp, like, what are they working on? And then be like, okay, here's how I think Basecamp 3 would be really useful for that. Let me show you that way. So it's, so it's in context for, for them versus like, like today I just kind of walk people through the, the tools and the features and how it's built. And I think I communicated it well, but it's still, it's not as contextual for someone. I want, I want to imagine someone seeing them in, seeing the, them in the product. And I think if I talk, if I understand what, what something they're doing right now, it might be like, hey, we just got a new client yesterday. Um, awesome. Let me show you how you'd kick off a client project with them in Basecamp. Yeah. Or like someone's yeah. like, you know, I, I, I've been, um, I've been kind of struggling trying to figure out like how to just divvy up all the work that needs to be done and know what the hell's going on. And are we adding more work every day than we're finishing? Like, I can't quite tell. Like, oh, okay. Um, let me show you how you could do that in Basecamp 3. And that way you have, you have a hook to, to explain. So um, I'm not sure where I went with that, but, but <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's, it's more about, again, the why, like really understanding why someone's coming to something and understanding what they're actually dealing, dealing with and then saying, oh, I've got something that can help you with that versus let me tell you about this and maybe you can figure out how that fits into your world, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this, you brought up something now about like, you know, helping people kind of walk through some stuff. And you and I had talked kind of just before getting on onto this about setting up seed data and stuff. And, and I know, you know, you, you guys have, have taught a lot of people about, about uh, you know, onboarding and about blank slates. And, but you guys have also done stuff with, like, I know in BCX about, like, this example project that was seeded with data. Like, what, what's, where, yeah, like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, what's more... Where do you decide like this? This should be a blank slate versus demo data, and and because like we're we're kind of you know high rise has, has got some blank slates, but it, I I'm I, I'd like to I think my gut says that you know we should have some onboarding where it's just like you know what are, there should be some contacts that are already in your in your high rise account when you start probably to customer support at high rise and maybe there should be a s example deal or something. I, how do you debate? you know, between kind of just showing them or, or giving them a little bit of instruction and pointing them to help sites or actually going full out and giving them like an example project, an example data. Yeah, so we're working on that right now and we're probably not gonna launch with exactly how we want it to be, but we're, we'll get there. Um, so we've never done it this way before, but what we're gonna do is when you sign up for Basecamp 3, we're gonna, first screens can be like, hey, do you wanna take a tour? Or like, do you already know what this thing is? Because mm. some people might know what it is. They may have already run into it some other place. And like, so if you say, I already know what this is, we'll just like let you go in and just mess or like start your own project, like get going, right? If you're like, no, I want to take a tour, we're going to walk you through, I think it's seven or eight screens we're going to walk you through and like boil it down to one thing at a time and sort of take you through there, right? And at the end, we're going to say, cool, do you want to play around in this thing for a while or do you want to get down to work and make your first project? If you say make my first project, we'll take you through the make your first project flow. What's it called? Who should be on it? Get going, right? If you say, no, let me play a bit, we're going to drop you into a sample project that's fully populated. You can mess around with it. You don't have to worry about breaking anything. You can just kind of dig through and, and look around, and you can even add stuff to it. It doesn't matter because it's only yours. Um, but what we really want to do, that's what we're going to do. But what we really want to do is I want to get to know the customer a tiny bit more either during the sign-up process or during the tour process at the end. It's like, do you want to play around? Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, like, I don't, I haven't fully formed this, but like, here's, here's, a, here's a dozen sample projects. Do any of these kind of sound like you? Like, here's one for a wedding planner. Here's one for a, um, uh, a design firm that, that's working with a client. Here's one for 
uh, a nonprofit that's trying to pull in a dozen volunteers, none of which want to use software together. Here's, here's you know, like, I want to come up with a few of these common, we, we know some of these really common cases, and then have the sample, and so they choose one of those, and they choose a separate, they be dropped into a sample project that's more relevant to sort of their world. So we always use wedding planners as an example, but imagine being dropped onto a sample project, a generic sample project versus a sample project for wedding planners. Wedding planners, there's some text documents that's like guest list. There's like, you know, tasks that are like, you know, call the florist and book the venue. Like, just just be able to, to, to read something and look at that and go, that's for me. I can imagine myself in that is way more effective. <clears throat> but I think even a generic project is way more effective than just like blank slates that just explain features. Different degrees of this, but the plan for us is to offer a tour at the end. Say, do you want to play around some? If so, drop you in a sample project. Hopefully, we'll have more sample projects as time goes on that are more relevant to you so you can figure one out, and then maybe you can switch between them if you want to see maybe how you're a wedding planner, but you're also a volunteer for at, at your church or something. Like, well, how would a church use Basecamp? You know? So that's what we're working on doing. So for you, it could be interesting to think about um, you know, what, what, are, what are three key scenarios why people would come to, to high rise? Is it like, I'm an owner of a company, I'm pitching customers on... 10 things a year, like, um, I don't have a sales team, it's just me. Like, it's me and my co-founder trying to land deals. Like, maybe what does it look like if you use high rise like that? Maybe it's like, uh, I've got a sales team of 25 people, they're all working on different things, like, what does it look like for them? So maybe maybe being able to do things like that, or like, I'm just, the, like, the reason we built high rise originally was because I was dealing with lawyers, um, journalists, uh, and people like that, and I want to keep all those conversations on the record so I know who I talked to and what I said and what they said and what I need to follow up next. Maybe there's just a simple version too where it's like not about sales at all, right? It's just about like you're a business owner, you're talking to a lot of people in your business, vendors, accountants, lawyers, the press, your landlord, whatever it is. Like keep all those conversations in one place now so you have them for the record and you can always get back to them and you know who said what, when, and when to follow up. And like, maybe that's another scenario. So that, that one doesn't have any deals in it, but yeah. it might have some cases that are relevant, you know? So maybe yeah. thinking through a few of those key things and, and building that out would be, would be useful. Yeah. Have you guys done, how, we, we get a lot of requests and it's another something, it's, it's another challenge that, that I go through of like, whether or not we should be doing um, some kind of demos some kind of sales, like, I mean, have you done any math or, or are drawn to doing one-on-one -on -one demos of Basecamp? I'm sure you guys get inundated with requests. Like, hey, can somebody, you know, give me a 15 minute demo of, of Basecamp? Um, yeah, if somebody asks, we'll do it. Mm. Um, so if someone emails support, we'll, uh, we'll set it up. Um, we also have classes, so we have like uh, live stream classes uh, regularly. Um, which people can watch, usually get a hundred or so plus people in them to watch those, and those happen every week. So um, people can follow along there. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do we'll do one-on-one -on -one tours uh, when appropriate. Um, so, but obviously, you know, we, we have, so like last week, over 6,000 companies signed up for Basecamp accounts. Next week, there'll be another 6,000, and we get for another 6,000. So. 18,000, you know, we can't, and we have like 48 people in the company and 13 people or 14 people in the support group. Like we can't, we can't give personal demos to everybody. That's just yeah. not how we're set up and our pricing just doesn't work that way. So, but, but we will do it occasionally if people ask and if, if they're, you know, if there's a good reason for it, we'll be happy to do that. Yeah. I, also, I think, um, yeah. I, I, I give some sometimes, um, people will just email me and I'll walk them through it and it's just, it's still, all, it's always good to do that because you learn something too. It's not just about teaching someone the product, but you, you actually learn something too. Yeah. Real quick, yeah. I have to plug my computer in. I'm running out of juice. So just give me one second here. Sure. Um, yeah, no, I mean, on that, I've also taken, um, we, we only have one customer support person, and then, you know, the rest of us have kind of helped out. So it's, it's hard for us to do, to, to stop and do demos at the moment. Um, but we'd like to figure out how, and, and yeah, I think we might borrow kind of a, a lesson from you guys and, and do classes like you guys have done. Um, but I agree about, about I've, I've also taken some, some calls from people who've wanted to ask for a feature or something, and, and I'll set them up. Um, and they're a little surprised to kind of talk to me about it. Um, but it's, it's, it's really, 
it's it's awesome. I mean, and often it's 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 still just kind of like a usually they'll be asking for a feature. They don't understand how something works. They want to they want to know um, um, you know if we could work on something. And it's usually just hey you know thank you very much for the feedback. We'll you know we'll cue this up you know or hey you know we've been considering something like this. But it's awesome to 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 have the you know. I don't know, the high bandwidth conversation about what someone's actually doing with the product. Like it was, you know, we were talking like, and it, it, it's, it's eye opening too. Uh, I, I took a call with a, a girl who runs a, um, she runs kind of like the front office for a, uh, for a Senator. And she was talking about how they use high rise and they take these signups of people, uh, who from, from, you know, constituents that come in, um, and it was just, it was eye opening just how she has to use high rise and, and what the office looks like and how people are, are getting into this system. It's very different than a lot of other people. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's wild when you, when you get on some of these calls that the new things you can learn, how people are using these products. And, and the things that um, surprise you about, like the the um, the little things you hadn't considered. But it, it, and at the end of the day, I think a demo is actually a learning experience for both sides, and that's that's the way I think it's important to look at it. Um, we you know we think sometimes we're like, oh, I got to show someone the product, so I you know I got to take a half hour and I got to show them this thing. But really, it's a half hour to listen also and learn yep. something you didn't know about someone. So like, it's actually a really great opportunity for both sides to learn something from each other. I think that's kind of the way to look at it. Yeah, I mean, if you have to do them all day long, it's taxing. It's, it's hard to do, and, but, um, but you, do, you do a few a week here and there, like it's a really good opportunity to learn something. Yeah. And also leave an impression with the customer at the end of the day too. Like if you're polite and, and patient and you show them things and you answer their questions, like they'll remember that too, and that's, that's absolutely worth it. It's hard, to, it's hard to, to think about the experience that customer had with you versus if they hadn't had that demo with you. Um, they wouldn't know you as well. They wouldn't think. They may not think anything of you, good or bad. They just don't know. They're neutral. But like you have a nice chat with them. You take your time to show them something, and they're and they're going to remember that. And I think that yeah. I mean, is it worth it? It's you know. There's of course it's it's worth it. Um, is it is it like justifiable financially to spend an hour with someone to who might who may or may not buy a product, and if they buy it, they're only paying you twenty bucks a month. I mean like. No, if you look at the numbers, technically it's probably not worth it. But of course it's worth it. It's it's like, of course it's worth it. Um, I've always like Gary Vee had this had this line about he's like, everyone always is always asking about ROI, ROI, ROI. He's like, what's the ROI of saying thank you? Like you can't measure the ROI of saying thank you or saying I love you to your mom. What's 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 the ROI of saying I love you, mom? Like there's no ROI. It's just of course you do that. It's of course the right thing to do, and you know you can't measure it. Does it? But but of course it's the right thing to do. So I, I kind of feel like in some cases this is this is sort of that too, right? But of course we can't make a business of giving eighteen trying to give eighteen thousand demos personal demos. It just wouldn't work. So you know you and you just you you do what you can basically. Yeah. yeah. It is three twenty nine. Let's call it. I feel like the next topic, whatever we bring up, is just going to go long. So okay, let's let's um. Let's commit to showing some work next week, both of us. Either like something that's um, in progress or, 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 or even something in the product that you're proud of or something that you're not proud of in the product. It's like just this thing is, this experience sucks. Like we have to get back to this, but like whatever it is, um, let's commit to that. I think that'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah, done. Cool. We'll both do it. Just yeah, and then to to do it. I mean, I assume we can just use Hangouts to share screen. Is that how you want to try and? Yeah. So I was actually gonna say let's start using Blab for a while and try that out. But Blab actually currently, as far as I know, doesn't have screen sharing. Um, they did build in the Save to YouTube feature, which is awesome. So we'll start using that too. But when we get to the sharing a screen, I think we need to use Hangouts. Yeah. Just go share your screen and um, uh, just say share your entire screen basically and just go full width on your browser or whatever you're using and that'll be good enough. Okay. Yeah, let's definitely cool. do that. All right. Awesome. All right, man. Then I will yeah. talk tomorrow. And hey, remember everybody, whoever's watching, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I don't know where the button is, but if I do this, it'll probably maybe it's up here or down here. It's in, it's either in this corner or this corner. It's somewhere. <laughs> please click subscribe. Make that number go up by one and um, 
and and you'll know when we're, whenever we have a, a new video, and it would really uh, really really help us out to make sure that you know uh, or that we know that you're listening and watching, and that you want more of this stuff. So thank you very much, and subscribe. See you tomorrow. All right, later on.